Let's talk about when things don't go right. A bunch of hieroglyphics. White blinking lights. In any industry, you're going to have companies that are at the top of their game and those that are at the bottom. Oh no, I've crashed it. But sometimes even companies that do many things right end up with the short end of the stick. The free market can be brutal. And sometimes all it takes is one or two bad business decisions and what was once a successful and profitable brand dies. Then there is the slow death, where years and years of bad decisions slowly choke a brand until the CEO finally finds himself in a boat on a certain river. Sadly, this too affects the music industry, as we've seen multiple times with past bankruptcies. And most recently, Sam Ash Music. Lately, it seems like the synth industry has been affected, perhaps a bit more than normal. And some of our most beloved instruments could go the way of the dinosaur. But failure doesn't necessarily mean the end. Success is often getting back up one more time after you've been knocked down. And this story today is about just that. It's about a small synth manufacturer that makes the plinky. The year was 2021, and out of nowhere, this portable synth slash modular unit with a couple of knobs, a bunch of hieroglyphics, and white blinking lights was released. It was DIY, MPE, touch sensitive, and it sounded like this. That's pretty cool for an 8-voice, MPE-capable handheld synth that costs less than $300, especially in 2021, because back then there weren't a lot of options available, especially in MPE. Nowadays, uh, it's a little more common. It seems like all the big synth manufacturers have at least one model and sometimes more. Then Loopop got a hold of one of these things, and this happened. Hi, this is Plinky. It's a combination multi-sampler, granular synth, virtual analog and wavetable synth with a pressure sensitive playing surface. It has eight voice polyphony. It's stereo, has both an arpeggiator and sequencer and a comprehensive mod matrix. Plinky went viral to the tune of about 200,000 hits. That's pretty awesome for a small synth manufacturer, except when you can't produce stock fast enough. Just ask Teenage Engineering about that one. Suddenly, the Plinky was sold out. And not just sold out, seriously backordered. Thonk was essentially the only place you could order one. Not much information was available, except that you could get put on a waiting list. And then, you had to wait. No soup for you! Come back one year! And wait, and wait. COVID was ramping down, but the worldwide chip shortage was just starting, and one of the main chips that ran the Plinky was in very short supply. The waiting list kept getting longer, and even a small second batch of units shipped late in 2021 did not help much. And then, as is the case with many small manufacturers, things went dark. Jump ahead to early 2024, and while the winter was mild, there was no communication on when any new units would be sold. Zero. Thonk's website did not have any encouraging news, especially for those of us who have been waiting since June 2021. That's three years. Was my email in the next batch? I thought I would never know. 
And that's really a shame because the Plinky was a cool little project. And supposedly there were over 6,000 orders for it. Then there was a light at the end of the tunnel. After doing some digging, I found a Discord channel on the Plinky. This ragtag team, headed by a crazy emperor and some others, discusses all things Plinky and Plink-like. And it's where I found out that the project had gone open source. This means that you could build your own unit from scratch. But that's a pretty daunting task for most people as you would need to source a PCB, LCD, specialized computer chips, custom order two laser engraved metal panels, and a bunch of other components, and then solder everything together without breaking things or frying chips. That's a serious task by any stretch of the imagination, and not something most synth users would want to undertake. I was actually considering heading down this path, as I know a guy who knows a guy. You know someone like that? And then this happened. This was now a no-brainer, and I grabbed the credit card and hit the buy button, even at the slight cost increase due to inflation. The wait list was probably still very long, but my very own Plinky was now traveling the high seas to the U.S. and was expected to arrive the following week. When my package arrived, I jumped right in, even though I was working long hours at the time. Being not the greatest at soldering and not really having done any for a bunch of years, I sat down and watched a few videos and got to work. I took my time and pretty much had everything put together in a couple of evenings. And the moment of truth, bam, zero issues with the power up. What was awesome actually was how much fun I had putting this thing together. I can't believe how much satisfaction I got from just a little bit of soldering. And my skills probably improved a little bit on the way. So I think I need to find one or two more do-it-yourself projects. So our story ends on a positive note. It seems that not only are Plinkies in stock, but there are some companion FX units. Bib is available for around 130 bucks and does delay, reverb, and drive. Although these are currently sold out. If you are interested in the Plinky, the link to Thonk and the Plinky site is in the description. And you should check out Lou Pop's video because this is a fun portable synth and a great introduction to the world of Eurorack. Stick around for some sound demos and be sure to hit that like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the other side of the mountain.